In this video, I'm going to show you how you can be able to use spec-driven development inside of a cloud code using a toolkit called SpecKit, which was created by GitHub. Now, we all know that spec-driven development performs a lot better compared to the traditional VAB coding because it provides a clear specifications about the project we're trying to build. And this concept was introduced by Cairo, which was developed by Amazon. Now, speaking of Cairo, if you're interested to check out how you can set up your Cairo IDE with spec-driven development, you can check out this video that I made on how you can use spec-driven development with Cairo. But for this video specifically, we're gonna take a look at how we can be able to introduce our spec kit into our cloud code development workflows. And in terms of the agenda for this video, these are the things that we're gonna focus on. First thing first, we're gonna focus on how we can be able to set this up with your local machine. After that, we're gonna take a look at the four step process on how we can be able to create our spec, our plan, as well as a to-do list so that we can guide our AI agents on the right path to build our project. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at the accuracy on the spec-driven development by having AI agents to perform some tasks on our projects to see the results for the spec-driven development. So pretty much that's what we're gonna cover in this video. If you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way, from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. So to get started, first thing first, we're gonna open our terminal and inside our terminal, we're just gonna run this command here, which will initialize our project using spec hits. So here, I'm just gonna give it a name for the project. I'm just gonna call it Fitbox app. And here, if I were to run this, it's gonna install the dependencies and set up our project. So here, I'm gonna choose a coding assistant. So here we have the option for Copilot, Claude, and Gemini. So in this case, I'm gonna choose Claude Code as our coding agent for this project. So here, I'm just gonna click on enter to select. So then here you can see it's gonna create our project. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open that project in VS Code. All right, so now you can see that I have opened my VS Code for this project. And here on the left, you can see that we have a couple of folders created. So we have our memory, scripts, and also templates. Now, don't worry too much about these ones because templates here, these are gonna be the generic templates that's gonna to use to generate our spec. And these scripts are basically gonna be executed to create those specs. So in that case, I'm just gonna open my clock code for this project. And here I'm just gonna use a command called specify, which is gonna start a new feature by creating a specifications and a feature branch. So here I'm just gonna tap this and follow that, we're gonna provide the prompt for what we wanna create for this project. So here you can see I basically paste the prompt and basically the prompt here must include your description for the application, your goal, your simple user workflow, and also what are the features you wanna include for this project. So basically I paste the prompt here and simply all I have to do is just click on enter and it's gonna generate the entire spec for this project. All right, so now you can see that the coding agent is fully complete and here you can see as a result, we have our new branch created, which here is the name for the branch, which you can see at the bottom here. And also we have created a spec file, which here you can see it creates a folder called specs. And inside of this, there is a folder and here it's gonna be the spec.md file, which it creates. And inside of this, you can see that it creates a feature specification for this project, which we're trying to build a Fitbox meal app. And here you can see inside of this doc, it has the feature branch label, the date, also the status, as well as the input from the users. Now, inside of the spec, let's take a look at what it includes. So here you can see this is what the execution flow look like on how it generates this documentation. And here you can see this is the quick guides, the user scenarios and testings. So what's really cool is that it actually gives you a scenario on different types of customer. So let's say if you're a new customer, this is what the scenario look like. So given this user visit a website, when they enter the post code, then they see if the delivery is available in their area, right? And also what the subscriber scenario look like after they pay for the plan, for the meal plans, and also what the admin scenario look like, and also what is the edge cases. So what happens when a customer tries to order outside of the alert zone, right? So these are some things that is gonna be considered and be able to mention inside of our project. And here you can see these are the requirements for the functional requirements. And what's really cool is that you can see that there's also a need clarification box, right? So these are a list of things that the doc or the model couldn't figure it out, but it needs us as a user, or in this case, the, or the project owner here to basically define those clarifications so that the spec here knows exactly how it can be able to build a system based on what we're looking for. So in that case, what I usually do is I will basically combat clock code. And here you can see it says there are nine clarification points marked for business and stakeholder inputs. So in that case, I'm just going to say that please list out those points here and those points here so that I can communicate 
with our team members. And here you can see it lists out all the clarification points for the business team. And here basically what we can do is we can be able to take this and be able to ask the team members on those clarification requirements. So then after we get their clarification requirements, here you can see I basically paste the response and let Claw code to edit the spec documentations based on the clarification requirements that we set. And after that, the documentation for the spec is successfully updated. And here you can see that the key changes have resolved for all the clarification points and also removed the referral programs as well as added the additional requirements that we set. Also handle and update the edge case handling, update the review checklist. And pretty much here you can see we have everything ready for the technical planning phase. All right, so pretty much once we're happy with the spec file, now we can proceed with the planning phase. So in that case, we can simply just use the plan command and follow that, we're just gonna provide a plan for the entire tech stack, the architectures, and everything on how we're going to implement this project. So in that case, I'm just gonna simply paste the prompt here and let spec kit and clock code handle the rest. All right, so now you can see that the full plan and the research, the data models, the contracts are fully created, which you can see on the left. So let's take a look at these things. So here we have our plan.md file, which basically you can see that we have our execution flow. Um, what's the execution flow looks like after we run the slash plan command. And here you can see we have our summary, the technical context on what are the tech stack we're gonna use for testings, for the languages, for the storage, for database, right? And also what are the primary dependencies we're gonna use for this project. And here you can see it lists out the project structures, the source code for how we're gonna create this, which here you can see if we were to create a simple single project, this is what it looks like. But if you're creating a web application with our front end and back end, you can see that this is what it looks like, right? Which we can also be able to create our mobile plus API and more. Okay, and here you can see we have our outline and research. So you can see that it started to do some research, which here you can see it creates a research.md file, which here you can see it's gonna do a technical stack research based on the project we're trying to build for the Fitbox meal plan. Here you can see the decision choice, the rationale, and also some alternative considerations that we can choose. And here you can see we have our UI libraries on which UI library component we're gonna use. In this case, we're gonna use the Shastian UI with MCP integrations. And if you're curious about how you can be able to integrate your Shastian UI library with MCP server, you can check out this video right here, which I'll show you how you can be able to build a beautiful UI web applications using Shastian with the Shastian MCP server. But furthermore, you can see that it has the state management decisions, as well as the database choice, the authentications, the payment processing decisions, as well as the architecture patterns and research. And not only that, it also gives you the data model, which we can see here, on uh, what are the tables we're gonna have inside of our post SQL. So here you can see we have our user table, right? We have our address, the meal objects, as well as the weekly menu and so much more, okay? So pretty much you can see that it creates a all the tables, the back end, the front end, the entire plan for this entire project. So in that case, once we satisfy with this plan, now what we can do is we can move on to the implementation phase. So in that case, I'm just gonna use the tasks command here and break down the plan into an executable tasks. So here I'm just gonna provide the prompt to create a MVP version of this application so that we can test it locally. So now if I were to send this request, now you can see that Claw code is gonna break the plan into a to-do list so that we can be able to view and be able to start to create our MVP application. Now you can see that the plan is fully completed for all the tasks we're gonna do. So here you can see it creates a task.md file. So here you can see this is the entire task list for this project. So inside of this, here you can see that for each task, it gave us a unique number for each task. First thing first is gonna create a Nest.js 14 project with TypeScript and configure the project structure. Then it's gonna do this and that, and here you can see there's a database setups, then also we have our authentication systems, as well as the core API endpoints with the test-driven developments, and also the front-end components, as well as the state management, payment integrations, subscription management, admin panels, and so much more. So in that case, it also gives you a phase breakdown. So first, from task one to five, it's all about setups, then from seven to nine, it's about database tests, as well as our data models from 10 to 14. So what we can do here is that we can be able to start to implement the setup for the first part. So here I'm just gonna say implement the task one to task five. Now I do have to say that there's no slash command for this, but I find the right way to do this is using a implement keyword at the front of the task. And here follow that was gonna be the task we're gonna execute from task one to task five. All right, so now you can see that the project is fully complete from task one to task five. And here are the each task descriptions. So we have our Nest.js 14, our core dependencies, our development tools, right, with our Prettier, Jest, 
playwrights for end-to-end -end testings. And here we also have our chassis and component library setups. So these are all the components that we have implemented and also the environment variables and validations. And here you can see this, the project status, which we can be able to run our application on port 3000. And here you can see, I also have keep the commits updates. So here you can see these are all the changes. And before that, I have also have commits the MVP spec and also the project plan into the branch as well so that we're not losing any progress here. And also here you can see these are the changes that this part of the changes has made, which contains all the project setups and everything else. Okay, so now what we can do is we can be able to run our NPM run dev and it should be able to run the application, which start at port 3000. And now if I were to run this application, here you can see this is what it looks like, which is currently running on Locals 3000, which is currently using the Shasta MUI library to basically display a MVP for this application that we have. Now, if you were to look at the project, here you can see that inside of our source folder, we have our applications, right, our layout for the page, and also we have our components as well for the customs, for the UIs, right, and here we have our hooks, our libraries, pretty much everything that we have our front end, which contains here. And there's also the test folder that we have, which contains the end-to-end -end test, the integrations, the unit test, and also the contract test, if we're gonna create it in the future. And now you can see that I have also commit all the changes onto this GitHub branch, which you can see here. All right, so pretty much that's what we cover in this video. And to summarize everything, we cover how you can install the Specify or the spec kits. And once we install this, I also mentioned how you can be able to use the Specify command to basically create a spec based on the project we're trying to build, like our features, our user flow, our basically the acceptance criteria and such. Then we also went over how we can be able to use the plan command to basically create a technical implementation plan. Things like our tech stack, our architecture choices, and also some research files, data models, and such. Then we also went over how we can be able to break down the plan into a to-do list so that our AI agent here can be able to implement the features. All right, so pretty much that's the review for SpecKit, which is created by GitHub. And if you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.